Who has questions for me? No, I'm just joking. Hi, hi everyone. This is huge backstage. Everyone's freaking out how many people are here. Uh, my name is Mike Morrison. I'm super pumped to be hosting uh, the Big Bang Theory panel. Uh, I'm not going to waste any time. Let's show the real.
thing that happened, the first thing I ever said to Simon when I saw him, because on his um, IMDB credential page, it says he was 6'2". <laughs> But for all of you out there that can't tell, maybe I am. Maybe I am 60. I don't know. 60 or it counts. <laughs> Where are your parents? <laughs> Where are your parents? My God. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. That's a dead first class. All the children are moving. Thank you very much. Okay, we'll be here on the left. All right, sorry. Next question. show would be a lot different without the laugh track. Wait a minute, how old are you? You have a newspaper? 16 years old. So that 10 year old's been divorced and you run a... <laughs> Time and, and so it, it does have that a bit of that feel where it's like, ah, ah, you think, well, that, that's not human, but it is, uh, we shoot in front of uh, humans. Tuesday and, nights, in front of a live audience, about 250 people. And if they don't laugh, we, they, we, the writers rewrite until they, they get a laugh. Uh, so we're never, we're never standing there pretending to hold for, for laughs. Um, but yes. uh, yeah, it, it, it's, we're fortunate to have great writers and people that want to laugh. So. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Uh, over here. Is a very small person or no? Well, then. Green person. <laughs> Hi. Um, I love you both. Uh, but my question is actually for Kunal. Um, oh, right yeah. Here, so so that you I clearly love us both. Uh, right? <laughs> well, you're green. Um, that's okay. It's, it's going to be a tough question. Okay. Sorry. Um, how does it feel to be such a dominant representative? Minorities in the culture, and if you could change something about your character, what would you change? Oh. This is like 60 minutes. Okay. <laughs> it's a very good, serious question. Uh, I don't know. Uh, I should have had therapy this week. But um, I, I didn't set out to. It's cool. It's, it's wonderful to be in a position where I represent minorities, but I never set out to represent minorities. I just wanted to be an actor. You know, so. Um, that became a product of that, which was, which is nice, and it's nice to be in a position where people, I can help people, I help inspire people, you know, to live out your dreams, no matter what race you are. But I never set out to do that on purpose. I just wanted to be an actor, and I wanted to be on a sitcom. It worked out, and uh, and then what was the second part? Um, what would you change about Raj? If you could change. <laughs> we, where do we start? I, uh, <laughs> I thought, I thought, when, you know, in honesty, actually, when the writer said that he, Raj, when I read that script, and I was like, oh, I'm going to be able to talk to women now, I had sort of a panic, like a little bit of a panic, because I'm like, is that going to completely change Raj, you know? But everything that he whispers in Simon, in all of it is here, he just says out loud now, so I don't think that there's been much difference, except you hear the horrible things that go on in his head. Less, <laughs> less hot breath on my ear. Thank you, Raj. Yeah, hey, thanks for coming to Edmonton. Uh, my friend Curtis Davis and I just were at right your uh, Valentine taping. It's amazing to see if you get tickets, but it's great to go to. Um, Simon, I was wondering, you just did a charity buzz thing that you gave a tour. And I just, for a fan thinking of getting into the bidding, how was their experience? And Canal. My friend Curtis Davis is the one always saying your wife, Miss India, at the SAG Awards and I was wondering while you're answering, could I could just give you a couple of pictures? I'm so confused. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you want pictures of my wife? <laughs> Um, 
were, you, were you wondering about what the experience for the for the fan? Um, yeah, well, it was a great thing. I mean, I, I was trying to raise I, just when I can. The, I think a couple of charity things I did that for were, were theater uh, based stuff, which theater's always struggling. And so, yeah, people people wanted to uh, to to come and uh, and donate, and I, I took them on a little tour after the show and showed them. Uh, Sheldon's spot, they want to see Sheldon's spot. Yes. Yeah. You know the funny thing about Sheldon's spot is that we, there's only one cushion that's been the same cushion for eight years. So what they do in rehearsal is, because they worry that cushion is going to get dented and damaged, we use a rehearsal cushion. <laughs> so it's, so did, did you know that? I, I didn't really know that. No. Am I making that up? Uh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's a lie. It's not made up. You don't need to. Nice, huh? So my question is, throughout the series, we've been kind of waiting to see the appearance of Howard's dad. And if it were up to you, who would you choose to represent that character? Oh, uh, I'm, I've been asked it before. There was a period where I was saying that I wanted Ringo Starr to play my dad, but it was just because I wanted to be Ringo Starr. Uh, uh, and I don't know if, that, if that's going to happen, so, uh, but I think it'd be kind of cool. Um, I have heard that, that we might meet him soon, uh, like you know, either this season or next season, so I I leave it to, we find out a lot of information the night before, so I, they'll, I'll probably open the script and if my dad is in there, I will look and see who's playing it. What if it's Raj and like, he's like, I am your father. <laughs> so, but yeah. he like oh, too much on the nose, on the nose, I think yeah. it wouldn't make sense. In, in the I'm cynical, cool. I'm done. Yeah. <laughs> and you'd be 60 years old too, which would be a whole other. Big Bang, Big Biggest Mystery Solved. Yes, that is. Excellent. Thanks very much. Uh, over here, Bill. Um, have you ever read the lines and then told the director, I don't think this works for who my character is? Um, you sound upset. Are you okay? <laughs> Are you working some issues out right now? I think sometimes there'll be, you know, the writers are so phenomenal what they do. Um, we really don't say anything to them, but sometimes there'll be a line that just doesn't sound right. You know, that we'll say, hey, can yeah. we say it like this, or can we add an okay or a but, just so we can make it, you know, make it flow better. Yeah, okay. And they, they, they catch all of it. We kind of all yeah. do our jobs and listen to each other, and changes that need to be made are, are naturally, naturally made. That's why the, the rhythm of the show is so, uh, pitch perfect in a lot of ways because everybody's, you know, playing the same song, I guess. But yeah, we don't, we're not, just, we, we try to be respectful. Um, but I like the way you had a lot of gusto. If I did say I was. So it, we didn't, yeah. I, I liked, uh, maybe I will use that tactic now. <laughs> and I will blame you when I get fired. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Over here on the right. Hello, uh, my name is Kenneth. I wanted to know that. How far apart are the similarities from the characters you guys play compared to your own lives? And seeing as how you guys have been through so many seasons playing those two characters, did you become more of a nerd playing a nerd? Or did you have, were you less of a nerd before you started playing? Nothing can turn me into a nerd. Uh, <laughs> that's just not going to happen. Uh, I think, uh, yeah, I think we're all, we're all pretty far away from those guys, but then, then there are obviously, we all bring a big part of ourselves to it, so they do start to kind of get, it gets a little blurred as it, uh, there are things where sometimes they're writing and I'm like, oh, what, that, there's some yeah, similarities in our lives. Sometimes and, when Sai and I'm hanging out, we'll just like, he'll be making fun of me the whole time, and then the writers will hear that and they'll put that in the script. Right. That's what I was doing in American Action and you were doing the yeah. accent. That was the time to hang out in the bar. The yeah. writers heard that. Yeah. I was okay. like, hey man, how are you doing? Right. And you were like, yeah. What are we working on? Yeah. And they, they uh, yeah, so sometimes, and then there was like, there, there are moments where I, you know, will find myself eating takeout and, you know, playing a game or something, and I'm like, wait a minute, I never did this before. Uh, it, it's turning me. Uh, 
Uh, yeah, so, but I think we're, we're way cooler. I mean, just, just look at us, you know? But, no, but that happens all the time. It's like someone will say, oh, you're cool in real life. I'm like, because I'm wearing jeans and a t-shirt? Yeah. And not, it's not <laughs> hard. It's not hard, like, you know, yeah. To step off that stage and look a little cooler, it's not really saying that. Yeah. Much. Awesome. Great. Uh, right here. Hi. Great question. Hi. My name's Brittany. I was wondering if, for assignment, if you were ever offered or if you wanted to sing a song me and Dr. Horror will sing along with all. Um, are you offering? <laughs> Part and it was there, there was no music and I was sort of thankful because they're all such great singers. But uh, we did the uh, the commentary and there was a song from there that I played piano on and, and sang. And I can do fun, you know, if it's like funny singing. But Neil Patrick Harris is it's it's beyond just funny. He's insanely good at singing. He, he would not have wanted me to sing uh, and, uh, even if you think you did. Uh, so yeah. Thank you. Uh, over there on the right. <laughs> um, how do you feel about your co-stars? Oh, worse. Ever since Jim won his fourth Emmy, he just <laughs> boxes his car sideways, takes up all the spots. <laughs> yeah, he wants to win enough so that he can hang one around Should with each of our necks. <laughs> Uh, now we're very lucky to get along. Uh, you know, eight years into the show, we still get along like the first time we met. So we're very, very blessed. Yeah, when Kunal insulted my height, the first time we met, that's how we get along. Uh, no, yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a. What if we just right now reveal that we just hated each other? Yeah. Uh, no, we're okay, we're here together. We're in Canada together. We, we, you know, how much, how much more love do you need to see than that? Because <laughs> yeah, we had a kiss on the show. Um, that was your one, how awkward that was for me. <laughs> for yourself. I really told you to get the writers to write stuff in. They saw us kissing in a bar one night. And, uh... <laughs> Honesty is, is sometimes new. Perhaps the most awkward relationship. 
You know what? Wait, I have to just remember. I'm sorry. Growing up, we were kids. You know, he said, no, when I, when I was, uh, when we were shooting that, uh, that, like, the tongue and the mouth, you know, the animate, whatever it is, animatronic thing, I don't remember anyone, what it was called, but the simulator thing, and we had to kiss. The, the most awkward thing was that our, our prop guy is this, like, big, burly guy. He had to control. The, they were like puppets, so he was hiding like, oh, no, 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 at crotch level yeah. under this table, <laughs> like just just watching our mouths and our, like trying to feel. And then the director would be like, more dog, more dog. And he could like be, you know, like. Yeah. Like, so it's a man at crotch, like, yeah. pulling, just like, like a hawk watching our, our lips and waiting for them to touch and then whatever. It was so, yeah. You really? When you brought the button on the scene, you actually grabbed it by the back of the head. You remember? Uh, yeah, it was. I thought it was really <laughs> You are right, and you have fantastic taste. Uh, yeah, uh, no, it can be. It, I did a lot of And it sort of tapered out a little bit, and, and, and that's, that's again a testament to the to the writers and, and just the, their, their fingers on the pulse of these guys. So we do actually grow throughout, you know the years, but just very, very small baby steps, and so it takes, you know, six years to hold a girl's hand or to speak, you know, whatever, whatever it may be, so that's, yeah, so the romance is sort of, we're, we're growing up a little bit, but very slowly, um, but who wouldn't want to simulate uh, making out with can all while a giant man puppets uh, under a desk? <laughs> I hope someone walked in right at that part. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I, I, Thank you very much. Thank okay. you. Over here on the right. Yelling. If you yell, okay, well, yeah, head over there. We should be able to fix that, right? Our characters. Right? Hi. <laughs> Hi. Hi. I'm Nicole. Hi. So I was wondering if you guys could tell us any embarrassing story about your other co-stars. <laughs> yes, they, they asked us to do that, actually. <laughs> That would be what kind of dish? Uh, well, come on. I'm new to something. I don't know. I don't. Well, I mean, I, yeah. The, someone that like forgets the lines the most, or someone that. I agree. I cannot. Yeah, cannot. I'll say my own joke and stop laughing. He laughs a lot. <laughs> Literally make a joke, and I'm like, that's so good, and I just stop laughing. Yeah. He's his biggest fan. It's, yeah. uh, <laughs> uh, what else? Uh, yeah, I think every uh, no. <laughs> Before every taping, I take a nap, and we have our dressing rooms right next to each other. And this is sort of pre pre show ritual. I take a nap. Before the taping, and I'm all, I don't set my alarm because I'm always woken up by Simon, who's warming up his voice for the show, and I'm asleep, and I hear. Uh, 
as you know, when I was a cat girl, I think it's not embarrassing. It's just unfortunate. Like Were you a cat girl? I don't know what I was, but it was. I was not, a cat girl. I was not attractive. And, uh, that never cost you my woman. That was like hot, sex. smoking. I took that home with an old man. I did. I did. It's getting really hot in the front row.
I think that it's not a superhero, but I was obsessed with Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Don't <laughs> 
we love the show, like me and my parents. Um, and my question for you is, if you could play any other character on the show, who would it be? That's a very good question. Penny! <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, wow, this That's is a good. really good question. You have stopped this entire panel. <laughs> People are like, uh, I don't know. It'd be fun to play. It'd be fun to play Jim's character just to see if I could make it through uh, some of those speeches and and, uh, and I could sit in that spot once and for all. And I know it's a rehearsal cushion now, which I didn't know before, but I, I like I like the real like the real. I, I, I think it'd be fun to play Bernard. I think it'd be fun to play Bernard. Uh, just to get the voice. Kiss me and oh. Well, 
really awesome. And, uh, and you know, there are no condoms. Did you say you need a condom in there? Choose it. You choose it. You chew? Oh, there's more reason to come see my movie. <laughs> Why would you do such a thing? Um, I want to say also, like, thank you guys, because I know I'm just being here and seeing you guys being here, it means so much to us. I, you, you don't know how much it means to us. Uh, I mean, the words can't describe it, so thank you for being fans of us and, you know, making all of our dreams come true. Yeah, it's really...